The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By faith alone, in Christ alone. Though Satan can think the right gospel of my Lord, our Christ, could not produce fruit on this earth, yet the word of God tells for us in Colossians 1.6, this gospel brings fruit in the entire world. If at all there is any failure, the failure is, is on part of the pastor, teachers and the evangelical work who haven't trained the disciples to be, number one, to be the disciples, and who have trained them in the legalism realm of the things pertaining, not abiding according to the will of God the Father. Yet they abide to be in God, but Lord our God is not abiding in them. The whole and the sole reason for it, not walking according to the will of Lord God the Father in heaven, neither understanding his will, neither knowing his will, neither able to understand the work of him or upon us which has been laid down so that we can carry with equal privilege and equal opportunity to be as Abba Father. In order to abide in us, our Lord, our God made us to be the temple of God. He has called us to be the noun of Christ. We are no longer to be called as, in fact, in, indeed, the hieros, the outward sanctuary, but we are the inner holy of the holies. What a privilege it is for us. Such great and unique privilege where Christ our Lord can abide in us. Therefore the importance of Ephesians 3:16 through 21. Besides huperic parosis, the inner ability given to every believer so that he can understand what he could be as a limitless power on this earth to do the work of our Lord and to bring to and bring into captivity every thought of Christ so that the people can understand when we are living in this world if it is only the divine viewpoint we could be there if it is only the mind of Christ we could be there we could be loved by the great God the Father where who go to seek and search him early and as it has been stand written for us the reproaches of the reproaching one the just for the unjust only Lord our God can make us to be having that peace through his dear beloved Son, making him and sending him on this earth to be for us his glory. If not, only his word would have enough. But we know the men don't believe the doctrinal miracles and the doctrinal promises which have been given to this mankind. God became God-man. And such a great privilege is of us today in the church age. God who became God-man, who got resurrected from the dead. The same power of resurrection which raised him abides in us. Though we may abide with our Lord, and if you are not abiding in the principle of Lord God, the Holy Spirit which he has written for us, you cannot bear the fruit of our Lord. And therefore, whenever we tell peace be to the mankind on this earth, it refers to the unbelievers, number one, who don't know the gospel and the power of the gospel of light, who are yet abiding in the darkness of this world, whose minds have been blinded not to believe in my Christ. And why no great peace for them who are yet believers in the Lord? Because they don't have the prince of the power of this air to be rejected from their minds. And they are not able to get out from seeking and searching the frantic search of happiness, having their minds inculcated in rationalism and empiricism, 
having their minds to depend upon their own experience or the experiences of the other people but never they knew the great peace of them is designed only through the knowledge of bible doctrine only the word of god can give you that peace as we are reading john chapter 14 the peace that i give the world cannot give the peace i give you because you have a calm you can hold and possess the word of god your terror or you will have a god you are absorbing and you are able to look in the right mannerism so that christ our lord can get emphasized so in you be manifested for you for his purpose besides peace we are been called to have good will good will good will rat son of the hebrew word such goodwill has been designed on the part of every believer's life. And that refers only to the believer's life. And when we read that through the word of God we are cleansed. But our practical lives when we appear. We are yet sinners in the mind of Christ. Therefore, we may think we are abiding in the Lord by daily coming and praying, by daily coming and kneeling and writing down the word of God. But has Christ our Lord is been abided in us? That makes the difference. And that is what it's all about. We are been talking and learning every day whenever we come in the presence of the Lord in the divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to shed light where our minds of men cannot understand, which is of mud, but only the mind of Christ can enlighten our inner mind to know the truth. Therefore, we have been constantly told to use rebound, 1 John 1 9. Therefore, we have been constantly explained in Romans chapter 11 to teach us a lesson. If the Israelites were a wild olive, if Israelites were olive tree and the holy lump being given for them, therefore now we have been engrafted without cut off branches, though your wild olive tree to bear fruit. Christ our Lord tells. That he is a wine, grape wine, and we are his bricks. And if for the Israelite, if we can call the Levitical priesthood court, and if we can look upon the grape wine, how the way they will be spread out through the furrows of it, you will certainly know why every believer in the church age has been given the privilege of priesthood. Why every believer has been given not to waste his time in useless and worthless things, but rather enrich and understand the word of God and live a life that could be pleasing unto Christ, my Lord, my Savior. Not wasting your time, but rather in return redeeming the time. Redeeming the time for the glory of his praise. Purchasing Kairos moments in the Kronos time. And what a great privilege it would be for us when we go through those things to understand why Christ our Lord has made us in that real. The council of peace which could follow of Zechariah chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 in the millennium. Our Lord, our God will be the model but right now we are the prototype of it. We the church age believers cannot waste our time in thinking useless and worthless things of this earth. We the church age believers can never wake up to the reality until and unless you wake up to understand what is Christ for us. You can understand the pattern of your life which is nothing but Christ for us. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2 being standard written for us. I imitate Christ God the Father and you imitate me and follow me, saith Apostle Paul. The rule which he has laid down for us, the high calling in the Lord, the honor calling in the Lord, for which price we have to run, and for which reason we have been apprehended by our Christ our Lord, so that living behind those things and, and looking ahead for the things of heaven, and looking and running for them, and forgetting those things which are behind for us. Only Christ our Lord is an absolute standard of pattern for the glory of Lord to come through our life. Only He. The pattern of him being virgin birth, and we are not talking about ourselves as virgin birth. The pattern of him being born from Bethlehem cradle to the Calvary's cross. He was in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being indwelt permanently. The same sample has been laid down upon us. We the believers are being from the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. We are being called as the temple of our Lord, our God. 
And every believer has been given this great privilege. Only the believers in Christ who are genuine believers in Christ. And how many of the pastor teachers are really teaching about these things we do not know. But it's an abiding factor to teach. As the nature itself is declaring the glory of the Lord and the atmosphere are declaring upon, upon his deeds. How much more we need to tell by following the example of the nature at least. Day by day they utter the speech and night by night they speak about for us knowledge. They disclose at least the way how Job was being asked in Job chapter 36 to tell where were you when I founded such and such things. Where were you when I have created the universe. At least the nature is teaching us. And yet we fail to realize the right glory of our Yahweh Elohim. And pay back to him that we just do unto him. But yet you exchange your glory for lie. And never you understand the reproaches of the reproaching laid down upon Christ our Lord yet today. But now from the inner end being friends to our Lord, being traitors to Christ. But right now we being to the church... And in the church, we are not able to understand our purpose. In the church, we are not able to consider the truth. And much is given for us and much is expected from us and much has been called to understand according to his will. But yet we say, no, Lord, we are not yet prepared. We haven't even read the word of God at least once in our life. Never you will wake up to realize the purpose of you being chosen in Christ for his work. If you yet follow gimmicks, pastoral trips, but never give number one priority for the word of God. Not giving number one priority for the word of God, you still search your happiness, but not abiding in the word, but not abiding in my Lord, by not residing for the work wherewith we have to go through the catharsis process every day, in fact indeed every breath. Such catharsis process where which we have to cleanse ourselves every day by not indulging ourselves into the thoughts of the cosmos diabolicus, but rather on return to make our lips to speak righteous things, excellent things, show forth upright things to the world because we have been called to be the salt of this earth and in return the word of Colossians 4, 6, it tells you are the logi to the world and you are the word of God to the world. Only the believers have been given this privilege to know the word of truth, not unbelievers. Morons like Zechariah, Sheikh Ahmad Didad or any other person who have been criticizing my Bible and who are criticizing our Lord's incarnation, crucifixion and resurrection, they cannot even get 0, 0.00 from the word. Not even a minute part because they are not believers and the Bible doctrine being a spiritual phenomena demands that you should be a believer then the scriptures will be revealed unto you. They may understand in their intellectual thoughts. They may understand in their carnal flesh. But those things are not spiritual. Satan calls them to be under the power of scandalizza to test them to use the scripture in the natural sense but never they will make them to understand the scripture in the spiritual sense. And that's the fate of Kleptes, Lestes, Mistotes, Thupas, Canapes, Thiflos and Sherras oriented minded pastors who are yet reigning in our pulpits. But for what they are reigning in our pulpits? For their own shame. Their belly is their God. Their glory is in their shame. They mind earthly things. And in get backing and in to get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they will say you have to use works. You have to follow the deeds. You have to exercise in such and such manner. But for us, the grace of our Lord being given to us to understand his word. One more day being renewed in our lives to come to know such great infallible and inherent word of truth wherewith we cannot pay our entire life together to earn them back when we go to heaven because in the heaven we have other revelations to be understood but while we are yet here on this earth Deuteronomy 29, 29 teaches to us the things that have been nakale for us, they belong to us. And these things are our possession, gala. 
And these things which have been revealed from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21, so that now we can understand the whole plan of God for which Christ our Lord has made us to be alive on this earth, for the reason why He has died as a substitute of spiritual death for us on the cross. The two deaths referred in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 9. And later on, giving for us the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has a token of advance of His love. Given in our hands a mission to complete the Bible fully to be executed in your minds to know from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 with the proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations so that you no longer slack in your thinking. Because to get every thought into captivity for Christ demands that you should know first that our Lord, our God, leads you in every place triumphantly through His knowledge and thank be unto Him. So 2 Corinthians 2 14. Far less we can think, the Word of God cannot get the fruit on this earth. If the Gospel of the Word of God in Colossians 1 6 says it is going to bear fruit, it is going to get fruit, and it is getting fruit in the entire world then the failure is from the department of the pastor teachers and the evangelical work in the permanent spiritual gifts given to them after the completion of canon in the church age who are failing not to raise disciples to the lord who are failing not to make them to become ambassadors to the lord by default though they are ambassadors but they don't have been given the caliber Their position in Christ is an ambassador to the Lord. Their position in Christ is a royalty of priesthood to the Lord. Their position in Christ our Lord is a royal aristocrat to Christ. And you have such inherent ability, you don't require again further to go back and look in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10 to teach the miraculous power, the dunatha's power given to you. And you give in the natural sense the miracles to tell you are having a bicycle, you have increased to become a owner car, you are having such and such things and Lord has blessed you and when you go and pray to them they will happen a miracle in their life. The word of God tells I shall fill the treasures of them and I refers there the wisdom, the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The pressures, the pleasures of this earth and the treasures of this earth are in fact even indeed nothing to be compared even to the dust of your feet. Far less you can start ministry for your money with your cunning attitude, with your false abomination lips and call that you are doing miracles and call that you are doing healings and call that you are speaking them and making them to be in the glass of lolia, the tongues. How stupid and how Irrelevant they are to the mind of Christ whenever we look. The term tongues, glasso. Rather calling it as a language when they have translated as tongue, the principal organ where you can produce your words from your mouth is purely because of the tongue. And before that we find the breeds of languages. At least when they can go and look the breeding process of animals, they can understand what is that. They don't find anything breeded which is not having any meaning and a sense in it. They can go and learn from the animal kingdom at least what is breeding. Far less now they can stand and talk along and tell that they are gymperously jumping and talking in the emotional ecstasy to tell that they are speaking in tongues when the emotional music is great. It is as simple as that Ezekiel 2337 when our Lord claims through Ezekiel to teach us. It's such a great pain, he tells. With the hands of them, they have left me and they went along to do their adur ideals worship. Therefore, you son of woman, you certainly make them to know what are their abominations. Oh, what is that? Eskel has to make them to know. With the hands of them, they left our Lord. With the adur idols of them, they went along to replace our Lord. And before that, the godly seed which would have been given for the purpose of Christ our Lord, they went along to give as a sacrifice for food to the devils. Human sacrifice. And for what they have were doing such things? For food. And what was the food? The food was to feed upon their belly. The food was to feed upon the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. In fact, when their food was even to get satisfied or be satisfied with the temple 
temple priests doing existed of the Baal where they should lay down with them for the months wherewith they should get their membership. To satisfy the foot of their lustful patterns, desiring approbation, lust, power, lust, sexual lust. And by this to go and worship such outdoor ideals represented as Baal. Just to get gratified themselves. But the seed was for whom? The seed was for Yahweh Elohim. The royal seed being chosen. Through Abraham. Even Galatians 3.28 teaches to us. Through Christ you are an Abraham seed. Sperma of Abraham seed is in you. If you believe, believe, believe. Now in the church age, every believer being called to be the son of God until and unless they are being born according to the will of God and to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Savior for his work on this earth. Such a great work belongs to us. Such a great privilege belongs to us. Such a great thinking belongs to us. Whereby you have been given not to be as just a son of women. The differentiation between the endowment and the enablement ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit in this church age. Therefore, constantly being proclaimed by Christ our Lord, the first prophecy to tell about the spiritual ministry, John 4, 24. Those who worship him must worship him in the filling of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, and by the biblical truth, both go hand in hand. The spirit of our Lord God which has been given to us to be indwelt in us demands only the truth which is nothing but the mind of Christ, the word of God which is nothing but the completed can of scripture and the 66 books which we have in our hands. And yet what do we find? Falsely calling tongues, falsely calling miracles, falsely calling XYZ reasons for your healings. Wrongly misinterpreting them yet in your natural sense, not able to understand the spiritual sense of those words. The miracle word which has been called for you in the KJV, it is not the same in the reality of the original Greek. It calls as dunatas, the abilities. Before the completion of canon, the ability of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, driving them to make great works for our Lord, which could be counted as miracles, the way how Apostle Paul went along in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 to teach us, besides his human suffering, the ability of the Lord endured him to go through. Besides his human suffering, the grace of our Lord was enough for him to make, to be strengthened in his weakness. And the same thing which he tells in Ephesians chapter Chapter 3, the ability which has been given to every believer right now in the church age, who perosis, after the completion of canon, though the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of tongues have been seized, yet we have now to understand what exactly is the gift of miracle during that time being existed, and right now through the church age believer, what Christ our Lord should make as a miracle in our lives. There is nothing that could be greater enough to be called as a miracle than to see that you have renovated your soul, you have transformed your thinking from the human viewpoint to divine viewpoint and you are living like a living sacrifice unto Christ. There is no great miracle than that. Besides, no matter however Satan could see that the gospel of Christ our Lord should not sign and not go to the entire world yet the word of god tells it has gone through the entire world and it is you who have to do that as long as you have breath in your nostrils as long as you can find in the midst of our lord that you have been kept alive for his glory for his purpose and furthermore he goes on to teach about for the communion table as often as you partake in these elements teach them the death of christ our lord Proclaim them the truth. Make them to understand the reality. As often as you can come. And you have been called to be coming together for your benefit. But we find that I have not come for benefit but for the worse. Why did they partake in the Lord's table weekly once today? But the word of God tells partaking in the Lord's table every day, every day, every day. So that you could be oriented to your thinking. Do you not know what Christ our Lord said in John 4, 34? My meat is to do the Father's will. And his meat was been constantly before his eyes to finish it. Do you think you are going to eat your meat weekly once? Far less you can get prepared weekly once for that work. The standards have been changed from week to month, from month to year. Do you know why? 
in a week at least they should train them up every day so that when they're partaking as Christ our Lord told on the road to Emmaus to those both disciples in Luke 24 when they have been expounded about the scriptures from the Moses and they have been ready to take it then the breading then the bread was been broken the time they realized that their hearts were burning that he was Christ our Lord without first absorbing the privilege of the word of God for us you cannot take in charge for the work of Christ our Christ exemplified for us in everything every manner every way of illustrations that you can get on this earth far less you can see the nature and learn from it the entire angelic host will work out for you to be constantly raising in your spiritual wickedness battle it causes man to compromise as Satan causes all the time to see the strategy of Satan is always two things number one see that none should believe in my Christ my Lord my Savior as the only Savior who has been come over here on this earth to die as the things pertaining to be fulfilled in the scripture so that none should perish but everyone should come to know what is Christ our Lord and what is the purpose of our Lord being chosen for them that's the very simple privilege number one Therefore, what does Satan do? Satan has a strategy to blind the minds of these unbelievers. But what Christ's strategy is, is there as a result for Satan's blinding the mind of these unbelievers? Calling the believers to be the righteous light. Calling the believers to be seasoned with salt. Whenever they open their mouth, there should be the word of God to these people. When Satan walks in one mind to say 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Christ our Lord tells Philippians 2.14 and 15 is the answer for it. In the midst of such powers and crooked generation, the word of God should shine. So that your labor is not in vain and your running is not in vain, but rather you have yielded until the day of redemption of our Lord, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and your fruit that you have yielded is absolutely right. And our Lord tells Colossians 1.6, the fruit has been absolutely flourished out. It went along to the entire world. There is nothing that can stop you there. The reproaches of the reproaching ones have been erased. The just for the unjust accomplished. So Satan not only blinds the eyes of the unbelievers, but the sad part is the believer's mind is also being blinded today by cosmos diabolicus thinking. But not able to take the word of God. To take the word of God from the original language of the scriptures through Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Through proper isagogics, categories and exegesis of the word. And the right dispensing technique of dispensations to differentiate between the privileges given for you under the limits of Israelites. But no limits in the church age. The polytema privileges. No difference at all. They tell the Old Testament is the same, so you come and give the tithes, but they never recognize the New Testament doesn't speak about tithes. The Old Testament talks about only the Levitical priesthood, but in the New Testament, every believer is a priest unto Christ my Lord to confess his sins wherever he is, either by thought, word, or read, whichever he will perform, because he doesn't have time to waste. In the Kronos movements given to him, he has to explain the Kairos movements which has purchased. And there are many innocent people who go along and I cannot call them as innocent as well. If they are really desiring to know the word of God, Lord our God will provide them the information. Irrespective of the geographical location, he will send them those right bona fide duty pastor teachers who shall certainly rein them up to rule in the word of God. And they shall feed them with knowledge and with understanding after the shepherds of God's own heart he is going to send. And therefore, when we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and following, we know some have been made as prophets and some apostles, and some have been made as evangelists, and some have been made as pastor teachers, the copulative conjunction Kai over there. The copulative conjunction refers to one as you copulate with your wife, you become one flesh. So is the duty of the pastor teachers there in the copulative conjunction Kai and the same grand village sharp rule explains the same things to you. They both are one. In return it should be the shepherd didaskalas or the poiman didaskalas. The didaskalas poiman who is going to guard you with the word of God every day, every breath. Day by day is going to utter the speech. 
and night by night he's going to disclose the knowledge of God when you realize his power when you realize his worth it is not just that we preach it is what that certainly counts is that are we really living according to the word of God or not and the word should get in you the Lord's will to be absolutely obeyed it should transpose and certainly it should interpose with your will and change your will from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint for that reason we have been placed over here so that for unbelievers you can answer back we have the mind of Christ we can tell to Satan to know that greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world the sad part is even we can find pastors who tell the believers are been yet demon possessed yet they are been still in demon possessed but the pastors who are telling such things they do not know they are been already demon possessed they are not true believers at all though they may kneel and pray to the Lord though they may have their work to the Lord to do the blasphemous word of my Christ on this earth to be manifested in the midst of the Gentiles though they may be sincere enough though they may be good enough that doesn't count with the word of Christ our Lord, there is only one thing according to his will, according to his word, he performs and he hears us said the word. If he abides in us, how he can abide in us when we are walking contrary to his will? When we are not seeking and searching what is the will of God the Father to utterly seek and search and knock and to understand what it is all about. Without doing your work, how can you know the will of God the Father? And in order to do his will, what is required? Your clean mind to believe the truth as the deer that pants for the water so he come to the Lord and you shall be filled therefore when we read Proverbs chapter 8 it certainly gives us a great motivation to tell I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me are we really loving the word of God if we love the word of God then we shall keep his commandments and how can you keep his commandments right from your kid that's why Deuteronomy chapter 11 teaches to us these things, these great things where Christ our Lord has done you shall teach them to your children because they haven't grown up yet to know what are the things of the Lord the burden laid down upon the parents and in fact indeed we worry about the silly and stupid things of this earth we worry about, though the word of God tells in Colossians 1.6, the gospel of Christ has been shining in all over the world. Yet we worry about, do you know how you worry? You worry the way how the Israelites were worried to cross before the Red Sea, where the Pharaoh's army has come with his chariots and with its horses. But what the word says for us, the great sign and the wonder which Lord our God has told, Today, if we can compare Satan along with the Pharaoh to teach about his horses and chariots pursuing the chosen people of God, to see that they should see they are not going to be able to preach through their lives the gospel of Christ, to see that they're, through their lives they are not able to become an effective ambassador, through their lives they are not able to become the holy man or walk of life on this earth, so that they are not able to preach the gospel of my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, if they would come and in front of us, if you are having the Red Sea, what the word says in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 4 if many people would wake up to understand such great facts we wouldn't have been found here what the failure is all about the great inspiration of the word when we read Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 4 if we can compare Satan pursuing you if we can read Psalms chapter 18 when King David writes for us to tell the battle belongs to the Lord already he has given us the enemies in our hand and we shall not return back and we shall not overturn until and unless we consume them utterly pound them into powder these things may not make any difference to the believer who is not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and in fact indeed these things will not even make a difference to the pastor who cannot be counted to be worthy as Epaphras was in Colossians 1 7 to teach us who is a Sundaulian together fellow servant and who was a Pistus faithful one in achieving the work of Christ our Lord and what did he make there he made again the Mathates he made e Mathates not a Mathates he made them to be their disciples 
And by that we refer what again? Every pastor teacher, if they make the believers to be their disciples, then certainly we can find such renovation in their thinking. So here we find in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 4. Have you made the water of the Red Sea to overflow, though they pursued after the Israelites? And how our Lord our God destroyed them unto this day, as a remark. And that is what you have to understand. The army of entire Egypt in its horses and chariots, which caused to be floated on the water of Red Sea, and over the faces, though they were been turning out for you to be pursued after you, yet they have been destroyed until this day by Yahweh Elohim. Their sign, their sign has been left as a mark so that the people now in the church age cannot give any reasons and alibis and excuses to be worried. They are worried to have children. They are worried to have the things pertaining to their physical wealth. They are worried for each and everything. But Lord our God has given such great inherent ability. When first we seek and search the righteous things of our Lord our God, then all these things will follow. Then what is our battle all about? Our battle is all about the spiritual comeback in to see that every thought that goes against the knowledge of Christ our Lord to get into captivity of Him. Isn't a great enough witnesses for us to teach that the gospel of Christ our Lord will certainly shine throughout the entire world? Is that not enough for us? And when we win the strategy of the first one, when Satan breaks for us not to be, to make every one who is over here on this earth according to the will of God the Father being born to believe in my Christ, because we cannot go against them who are being not born according to the will of God the Father to believe in Christ. Like Zacharnaic, even the Uric one, even anyone who goes against the knowledge of Christ our Lord, not to believe my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be the only Savior on this earth. We cannot certainly go against them because the word of God tells in John 1 12 to enlighten our purpose on this earth, to make to realize others as well. The just shall live by faith. And who are the just ones that have been counted? Those who have been born according to the will of God the Father, they will certainly obey the gospel. They will certainly believe in my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, and we don't require anything else to be larding over them to tell you have to believe, you must believe. It is the gospel which has been taken by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is truth and makes them to work in that, to believe in my Christ. We are not here to lard them. We are not here to convince them. We are not here to make others happy at the cost of playing our gimmicks and being, un being unrighteous in the sight of our Lord, our God. How can you speak out the excellent and upright things if you are not deriving and digging the word from the original languages of the scriptures? And what does the word say about the gospel in the original languages of the scriptures? Believe and no works. You know you cannot get along to the things pertaining to the right essence of Christ. No one can work his own righteousness on this earth. The word of God tells that this world is a filthy rags and our, in our accurate translation of the Hebrew, this world deeds are being put together as malicious cloth. What do we do with that? It's rotten. It smells. And the word of God tells no woman to have authority over the men and whenever they speak, they're having shame upon them and they're doing a wild thing, says Colossians, says 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 37 and following or 31 and following. But yet there are men who are cheating others. Aren't they teaching lies? Aren't they disobeying the word of God? Aren't they are not acknowledged to be having to understand that they are spiritual enough and they are understanding to acknowledge that they are really mature enough in the realm of the New Testament prophet for foretelling and not foretelling? If they are ignorant, let them be ignorant. How many days more you can be ignorant? Since your ignorance is reigning in the maximum, so the word of God, Christ our Lord, is not being taught in the gospel realm. And if the first victory has been done to see that the believers have been there in Christ, then the second one is very simple. Because the first strategy what Satan uses is to see that none should believe in my Christ. If at all they believe, the second thing is, see that they don't grow up to learn the truth, yet provide them for lies. And after becoming a believer in the Lord, if you have the sperm of Christ our Lord in us, if you really fear our Lord our God right from the days of your childhood, so that your parents can teach to you the things and the deeds of our Christ our Lord, not just nature can teach to you. 
and when you grow up to become youth to carry the burden of yoke our Lord and not to sin against our Christ our God the Father in heaven and you continue in the fear of Yahweh Elohim and you love our Lord's word every day and when you grow up in this realm You are no longer to be in the stage of adolescent, but you will become father in Christ. You will lead others. Your life will be as a ransom for many. You will be like Abraham, the way how he was a friend to our Lord, and the way how he multiplied through the way the stars of the heaven to go and watch him to see. If he can count those stars much more than that, I can increase you. Already those stars are equivalent to the third fallen angels. One third of the fallen angels. And that is every believer over here. And every believer has that privilege and opportunity. And every believer has that power given to him. The inherent ability. Who perfect perishes. So that not only just abiding in Christ. Not only that Christ our Lord could make a way for you to be involved in your heart. To be rooted and grounded in love but producing much fruit. The spirit of miracles worked in them to sustain for Apostle Paul, for Apostle Peter. The same spirit of miracles which worked through them made even those who were not able to understand that they were being sent by God to establish their authority. And when once the authority was been established, the example of Apostle Paul, he never used the same spirit of miracle to certainly make his dear beloved friend though he was nigh unto death. And who was a faithful minister so that sorrow should not add upon sorrow. Our Christ, our God, the Father, gave him to write for us that these things were temporary and they will cease. But after writing for them that these things were temporary for us and they were been seized, we have right now in the church age, after the completed kind of scripture, the greatest ability given to every believer, the hyperic parousis. And you believer cannot compare to the unbelieving world and say the rationalism and the empiricism could be greater than the pisticism which is nothing but the word of God, the belief in the doctrine of Christ. We are called to be led at every place, triumphant enough in the knowledge of Christ and thanks be to Christ our Lord, our God, our Father in heaven. For such name of Yahweh which is nothing but the revolution of the word of God. It is not a name for gimmicks and tricks. So that the people can play in their pastoral gimmick tricks. The name itself of Yahweh Elohim is nothing but the gift of revolution. You don't look according to your circumstances and you go back to the word of God. You look the word of God and then you come and understand the circumstances that have been passing by through you. Every word of the Lord is pure. Every work of Christ our Lord is absolutely sure. His testimonies are pure and true and right. In fact, even indeed, what can we say when Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8 teaches to us heaven and earth will perish off and the man over here on this earth wants to depend upon the testimonies of the man and not the testimony of the word of God wherewith he resides over here in this heaven and the earth, the atmosphere where which he has been placed and is realizing those testimonies to be great but he has not realized the testimony of the word of God which tells such testimonies which you carry and take from the heaven and the earth, they will vanish off but the word of God our Lord will abide forever. And that's the reason John 4, 24, and that's the reason Christ our Lord to make our homes in heart. If it is not the word of God, there is nothing. That's the reason when we may think we are abiding with our Lord. And if Lord our God is not abiding in us, which is not according to the word of God, which is neither according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound in the privacy of the priesthood, then you can find the word not abiding in you. You can find your life in vain. You can find your life in vague. You can find your life in vanity upon vanity. If the word of God abides in you, that's the fruit. Not the exercising of your false miracles, exercising anti-doctrinal healing, exercising anti-doctrinal tongues. And what are the healing? The path for the one who can issue health in you. Certainly when the aprons were been made and they were been walking, they were been healed of their sicknesses and diseases. Why? So that they can now meet the works of repentance, metanoia, and come back to understand in the right proskunia of our Lord, and they should worship our Lord God the Father in heaven forever. By following his words, by walking in his words. 
and after the completion of canon, those things have been ceased. And the spirit of healing for us today is nothing but. And when we read Proverbs chapter 4, when we read the things pertaining to the mind of Christ, the best medicine for your flesh is the word of God, says Proverbs, long back before written. And the New Testament it gives for us, Rejoice in the Lord always again. With Christ our Lord we can do everything. The things which are impossible to be men and the things are possible by our Lord. I can do all things through Christ our Lord who strengthens me. That's enough. How can we be strengthened enough? How can we be having our physical vigor and spiritual vigor, valor and vigor? If your spiritual valor and vigor is straight then your physical vigor also will be the same. Because you are being called to be immortal until the work of Christ our Lord has been completely done on this earth and not returning back till we can consume back our enemies. For unless you can think the gospel of Christ my Lord could not be shamed in this world. If our Lord our God is not yet long suffering, so that none should perish but everyone should come to the word of God. And our Lord was not so much close enough to tell to the reality of 1 John 4 8 to in the angelic conflict to Satan it is not me no longer who shall answer but the lower creation than you it shall be answering you if our Lord was not so much of long suffering to make his dear beloved son to get into the realm of metamorphisms so that now we can understand why we believe in the Lord our God long back Christ our Lord would have winded up this angelic conflict there is no need for him there is no need for him to get be grieved, to be squelched, to be lied by your anti-walking in the word of God. And grieving and squelching and lying to the nailing mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There is no need for Christ our Lord to sustain all of these things besides you see for the work for which you have been called and you are not even entitled to know about that. There is no need for our Lord to do such and such things. He doesn't require any larding from you. As if without you, Christ our Lord cannot get along. Without him, you cannot get along. Not Christ our Lord. He can use the donkey. He can use the rooster. He can use the burning bush. Then how much more we need to be. To think that Lord, without you, without us, we can, without us, you cannot get along. It would in return, it should be without you, Lord. We cannot even take a breath. In spite of this great polity of privileges given for us in the church age. Yet you grieve, yet you squelch, yet you are ignorant and arrogant to turn yourself to the infallible and inerrant word of God and to teach faithfully the way how the Aparpas told in Colossians 1 7 by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit that he made disciples and there and he was a faithful servant of the Lord and he was a fellow slave of Christ. He was faithful, he was faithful. What he was making, he was making disciples. Today the pastors are not making disciples, but in return they are making them nominal Christians, conventional Christians, and ergo Christians, weekly Christians. And yet not able to wake up that our Lord our God doesn't require this drama to be played on this earth. The human history. If he would have minded, he would have long back winded up the angelic conflict. The long suffering of Christ our Lord for the reason when Satan challenged the character of my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, to tell Lord God you are a love, how can it be that you can send your angels to hell, the one of your own creation? And to answer back them, our Lord God made this human creation. And the first one, Adam and Eve, they failed, in spite of all the privileges what he had. And why we call only Adam, not Eve, the root cause? Eve is constantly to be under the hobby of her husband. Adam knew when her Eve ate the fruit, he would have left the Eve and have obeyed for the word of God and have stayed alert. As such today we find men still believing their wives' words and spoiling their own families. 
not able to have thorough knowledge when Peter tells in 1 Peter 3 you should deal with knowledge when you marry and that includes not just the knowledge of your sex it includes every facet of the way how she is why she is called as a wicker vessel how can she be easily entangled by the false people thoughts and why she cannot become a virtuous woman and why it is that you have been placed as a guardian to her the way you think the way she is going to act in 1 Corinthians 11 3 when we read and if you are thinking idiotic even she acts idiotic and weird so Adam was responsible over there to tell but those sin does not come and being justified directly through Adam Satan constantly uses cunning fables the which doesn't even have guts to stand and to pursue the army of Israel with the army of Egypt with its various horses and chariots it doesn't have guts because Christ our Lord can make even the things which you see and you cannot believe and the things which you can hear and you cannot understand besides that he's going to make a marvelous things in his life because his name itself is a glorious and marvelous God and who can stand at his presence to tell, no Lord, you cannot do these things. Though the entire people may come along like the army of the Egypt, our Lord God, our Christ our Lord has a solution for it. He made them to float over the waters. Until date they have been destroyed. Because his deeds are eternal teaching a lessons for this mankind who have been of mud. Farless angels can wake up and realize what they have done, their mistake. Rejecting the salvation provided for them for the repentance, but they went along to be among the five I wills through their leader Lucifer. I will also ascend to be in the heaven. I will also be like my most high God. I will also rule over the throne of the angels. I will sit upon the throne of God. Pride walks before before you fall not humbleness but looking at the deeds of this mankind today the angels should learn and they should repent why they have let go such great salvation which has been provided for us and we are learning from this low caste of the angels low, low order not caste low order of the creation which is nothing but human mankind who doesn't have wings and Satan tempted the true process of Eve. And Adam knew what he was sinning, why he was sinning. In the arrogance, cognizance of him, he was doing it. He did not wait upon to obey the word of God. In spite of all the privileges given to him, he did not even resist to wait. But in the church, it's not the vice versa. It is not the church will speak unto the husband that is Christ our Lord and certainly Christ our Lord would be absolutely available to listen to the words of the church. No way. The church may be a title to our Lord for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. With the gift of God the Father, our Lord our God tells, it is not that you abide in me, it is that I abide in you and how can Lord our God abide in us? Without his word, without his mind, he cannot. He cannot abide in us without His word. He cannot make a path for us to be involved by the Shekinah glory in us if we don't go through the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly cleansing our thoughts, word and deed. He cannot. Erase that thought by your works you can please my Lord. Erase that thought by your deeds you can please my Lord. He has been pleased only by one thing that you boast in His knowledge, that you learn His knowledge. The entire things wherewith you can be told in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 23 and following Obeying Lord's word is enough rather than you give a multitude of sacrifice Even the Lebanon put together cannot satisfy him Then what is the best way you think you can please him? Isaiah 66 1 and 2 teaches to us The one who tremble at his word The one who tremble The terrorism in the world is not been made by men they think they are able to look back by their false thinking. The real terrorism is to yet come upon my Lord when he tells in Isaiah chapter 2. He is a terror. His name is terrible upon this earth. What man can think in his own terms to target such and such country of USA, to target such and such country of other parts and they think they are making for the Lord their work. 
the terrorists. Not this terror. Every believer is an absolute terror by the word of God to this world because he knows the vengeance belongs to my Christ and is like a voice in the wilderness making a path for a terror of our Lord. Pronouncing grace before judgment. Many men can't even understand what is that grace. Like the way how Adam was, just to touch, to handle and to taste the world. He disobeyed God's word. And yet now the teeth of the men are paining. But Christ our Lord has given a permanent solution for them. That when they wake up to realize and to believe in my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, their teeth pain is gone. And they have been once again brought to the image of his son, Colossians 3.10, to be confirmed on this earth in the midst to tell, yes, the first Adam failed, but through the second Adam, he has a generation of alikadekadesis, the new spiritual spaces in Christ. Those who walk and abide in the word of God and they are cleansed every day by the word of God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to please men, but to really judge the angels to tell in their spiritual wickedness, though they have been targeted constantly. It is the word of God through which they are preeminent in everything. Just to tell to the world, not only this light that comes, the light of the gospel, the light of the word of God also comes through us. We shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. That's what we believe. If there is no truth for you in any other thing apart from the word of God, then why you want to waste your life thinking that this truth could be when I give money to the Lord in the form of tithe, when I give money in an offering, let your money perish with thee. The money cannot buy you the truth. Therefore the truth is free. The salvation is free. Anyone who is thirst, come and drink this water. This water is free. Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. Who can charge for the bread? Who can charge for the water? Who are we to charge? It is the grace of our Lord given for us to certainly sustain on this earth because Lord our God is our inheritance and the word of God tells he is going to fill our treasures than what else we require and by that time in the spiritual treasures. How much is required for it to survive on this earth? That's enough. It is Lord our God who said to Elijah to go and sit over the brook river and he sent with a ravenous nature crow to certainly feed him the food. How ravenous nature the crow was when Noah sent it out. It went along to feed upon the dead animals. It couldn't wait for 40 days. With such ravenous nature, our Lord teaches a lesson. Though you stand in the midst and slay for me as a born slave on this earth, where you can constantly find a ravenous nature attitude, yet I am faithful and abiding enough for you to provide your food. What else we require in those words, apart from having to believe them? What else you require in those words, when the army was being floated out in the water, in the Red Sea? What else you require when Lord our God says, I'm going to glorify you and I shall never keep you inferior in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Apart from teaching them the seed of the word of God which has been required for them to be Lord's seed, they went along to become the human sacrifice. The great pain is Kel chapter 23 verses 37. The abhorrence is what they have done as a son of human, you have to preach. The abhorrence is what the church age is doing today. By growing and squelching and lying and not growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, we have to proclaim and cry out. And not to please men for the sake of some bread or for some handful of barley and change the wheat to chaff and feed them. Shame upon such men. And the men who don't grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine from the original language of the scriptures are not even worthy to be called as the pastor teachers to that congregation. They may be happy to be impressed by their followers. They may be happy to be impressed by the men who are of those standards. They can understand it. But the word of God calls for you to become a perfect man. Marriage has not been made with kids. A perfect man to move from milk to bread, from bread to meat. A strong man. 
who lay aside the fundamentals and go along to reach maturity and discern what is right and wrong in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict in the completed canon of scripture to reach MDG, maximum glorification for Christ. And what is happening today in our pulpit? They are not reaching MGG from the original languages of the scriptures. But they are reaching for that where the Bible tells it is not even worthy to be counted in their account. Not even worthy. The world is cherishing and nourishing and enjoying its own lustful patterns of the old sin nature by thinking they are doing great works to the Lord. But when it comes to the mind of Christ, they are zero, zero point zero zero. They are yet craving and squelching and lying. And why our Lord yet is long suffering? Do you know that none should perish, but everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of Christ? The complete knowledge, Deuteronomy 29, 29, which has been revealed for us. He has to master them from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. And he has to certainly grow up in those terms dispensationally and dividing the word of God, the importance which were being given not in the Israelites, but now being given for us in the political privileges to be like a saint and to conform to the image of Christ our Lord. Because without Christ, we are nothing on this earth. Just for that one reason, to conform to the image of his dear beloved son by looking upon to the confirmation of the fellowship of suffering for Christ on this earth, our privilege has been given for us to look the truth. Only our privilege that belongs to us. In this earthen vessel we have been given the divine treasure, not just being called a son of human, we have been called as sons of God. The problem with us is people love lies rather than truth. Anyone who is of the voice of truth will obey this voice, saith our Lord. Anyone who is of truth will hear and obey this voice. And the road that goes to the truth is very, very narrow and straight. And we know very well how many people will make that to reach MGG besides this information which we are giving to them. As our Lord our God is long suffering, the first thing what you are proclaiming for them is the grace before judgment. There is no need for our Lord to prove the integrity of his essence to Satan and make this mankind into place over there in the Garden of Eden by renovating this earth for six days. There is no need. He would have winded it up then and there itself. And Satan thinks it is achieving its target. In the present Christendom of the church age, how many of the believers are grieving and squelching and lying in their thoughts to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather using the privacy of priesthood to rebound by the confession of their sins and get back into the fellowship of Him? How many believers are there yet we know? And you know very well how much of the modesty it should reign in you to tell, yes, you are yet sinning in your thoughts, word and deeds. You are sinning your personal lives. You are sinning by ignoring the word of God. You are sinning by not obeying the truth. You know that. We don't require an explanation from that. And not only just about the believers, even the false pastor teachers who haven't been given the bona fide gift, yet they stand in the pulpit to teach without getting the languages of the scriptures from the original realm of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, without teaching them with proper isagogic categories and exegesis, without teaching them the word of God in the dispensing technique of dispensations, without teaching them with the intense hermetical principle of the truth and without teaching them with the right exegeomai techniques. If this is one end, the third part will come. Whether they are right pastor teachers or false, by their works they do. How the work says, the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed. It is not weekly once you sum up your messages. It is not monthly once you speak the same thing in each and everywhere, the place you go. It is every day something new from the mind of Christ. Every day something alertable for us. Jeremiah 23 verses 3 and 4. They shall not be confused. They have been sent by me. They shall neither lack being fed by me the word of God to teach. Every day something new. Every day something alert. Every day something great for us. 
such a great information has been laid down for us in the Bible from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 only from the original languages only from the original languages not from the things that you read in your translations can give you those and do you think Lord's hand is short to provide you such bona fide gifted pastor teachers he can make a best preacher from the cigarette bird his hand is not short but your heart is not willing to ask for such men you love to worship with your lips you love to worship with your money you love to worship and cover your sins by your own sin nature through money telling that you can bribe our Lord and telling that you can come one step closer to our Lord but God our Lord our God has not been mocked by you he is having no respecter of persons what you sow that he will reap and since the word of God which our Lord said in John 15 3 by the word that I have spoken unto you you are cleansed God the Father further cleanses us when we are able to abide in him and he abides in us how many days more yet you want a grievance question lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit that you decide We are not here to become popular. We are not here to become famous. We are not here to count ourselves to be having so many followers, having so many subscribers, having so many men who are looking upon us. Who cares? We are only worried about one thing. Have we done the work of our Lord by proclaiming them the grace now before the judgment could follow if they ignore yet the word of God to be taught every day in their pulpits by the bona fide gifted men who have been faithfully trained by the KT theology when their knees are straight in the presence of the Lord then their tongue can become the pen of the rediscriber so that in nothing they shall be ashamed when they stand in the presence of the Lord but rather they have rightly divided the word of God. That it shall be found. Don't worry about that. And the strategy of Satan is nothing. Zero, zero, point, zero, zero it is. The word of God tells in Colossians 1, 6, pertaining to the gospel, it has been reached through the entire world and bearing fruit. The word of God tells in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, that Christ our Lord at every instance, he leads us triumphant with the knowledge of our God. The both strategy where Satan uses, number one, not to believe in Christ, has been solved by Colossians 1, 6. To see the believer don't grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine it has been solved by 2 Corinthians 2.14 provided they are positive enough to come and take the word of God every day which is more than everything else that has been required for them. More than anything else. They may have their reasons to tell they require such and such these things such and such and they may have their lives in that, is in their, in that issues but we find in the word of God the fear of the Lord will certainly is nothing but hating evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the perverse mouth which has been twisting that I hate saith our Lord therefore the fear of the Lord is number one to hate evil and the world is evil and if you don't hate the counsel of the evil never you will understand the counsel of God the sound wisdom the understanding and the strength which you can come and reign like a king over here on this earth for which you have been called to be kings and for the kings you need to write at least once the Bible and but we have been called to write for you to thrice once in the uninspired word whichever language you write the second time in the interlinear scripture inspired and uninspired word to put together in English and the third time you write in the original languages of the truth and it has been called for you to understand not only the prince and the princess but they also rule together along with the nobles and then you will be called as a spiritual mature believer to be a noble one not the world can recognize you and call you and give you as a noble prize but the word of God tells when you walk in the fellowship of the word of truth you will be called as a noble and not only noble but judges to this earth and those who seek early they shall find Find, and they shall certainly find the way of their life as well so that the word of God when it is more than your iris to be the light for you then certainly you will wake up to recognize everything according to the word of God dear brethren the way how the people will tell if one is having the things pertaining to jaundice is everything will look like yellow if he's having yellow jaundice then certainly he thinks everything to be in the color blindness of yellow jaundice itself likewise when the word of God has been entered in your mind when the word of God has been for your pupil of your eye or more specifically the iris of your eye it is very much needed for you to look everything as in the terms of the word of Christ and that's the purpose for which you have been kept alive the purpose of word of Christ to judge angels not only just men 
Fireless, the men can think they're having their righteous deeds and the world will work for it in the rationalism and empiricism. Throw them out through your cryonics or cloning. Throw them out through your thinking that the word of God is not the creation factor of this heaven and the earth, but by Big Bang Theory, throw them out. Wash your mind from the word of God. The heaven and the earth will perish. Our Lord, our God, is the Pantocrator. He is the one who controls everything and by his word he made everything and you have to believe that because heaven and earth will vanish off but his word will abide forever. The systems that have been originated from this earth, carbon dating or XYZ, they may tell they are of this earth, but they are not of the word of God. Yet the people will learn day by day when the word of God through its nature speaks the wisdom and the word of God night by night discloses them the knowledge they are yet to find from the word of God. The word of God which tells to them the nature at least teaches them what it is and they are seeking and searching the nature. And they should know how the heaven will declare the glory of Yahweh Elohim. How the atmosphere will declare the deeds of our Lord. They should wake up for such things. Far less they wake up to realize the iris of their eyes should be the word of God. And walk and look and seek and search. The purpose for which he has been placed for us over here on this earth. Every church becoming a theological seminary and every believer becoming a saint in saint to be a teachers for the fallen angels. The nothing of this world which has been bought to be to get the wisdom of this world to nothing for which we have been placed over here on this earth dear brethren whether you believe it or not. If not Lord our God was not needed for you to be formulated from the dust and breathe in your nostrils the breath of lives plural not singular. The soul and the spirit. And the word of God itself can divide the difference between soul and the spirit. The word of God itself can teach to you what it is that you should be born again to be activated in your spirit. And to be created in the spirit for the glory of Lord being taught by the Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling your activated human spirit, your inner man strengthening with the Christ and his word. And changing the facets of your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint and control your flesh for the glory of Lord. We are no longer the slaves of unrighteousness of this world as we were earlier before believing Christ. Now we are the born slaves of Christ our Lord and his righteousness so that whenever we open our mouth we speak excellent and upright things and the righteousness of truth flows from our mouth and anything that is abominable that our mouth hates and anything which is not against which is not according to the original language of the scriptures and against the original language of the scriptures is an abominable and everything that the word of God tells for us every day the word of God should be taught in the pulpits though the outward man perishes inward man should be readied though the death works in us but life in you and if you say no we cannot teach every day then you are an abomination the word of God doesn't encourage that not just becoming a self-state pastor or a self-state preacher, going to the villages and training them up. Weekly ones. The mission where Apostle Paul said, no man can serve two masters. If you're coming to the work of the Lord, you have to come completely dedicated for it. And every day you have to teach. And that's the right duty to make disciples if they're believers. If you are preaching a congregation, then you have to be a pastor, teacher for them and you have to train them up every day, not just going monthly once and weekly once. If you are an evangelist, you can do your work whenever, wherever, however you wish. But the pastor, teacher has a certain limit. The church is a theological university. The church is the theological university and theological seminary where the pastor, teacher is the dean. And the believers come there to learn the word of God. And when they become the disciples, they in return become the professors to teach to the fallen angels what the love of Christ our Lord is, including the elect angels, the grace of this mystery doctrine, before the ages being hid. And now how the way the angels rubber my cast all in First Peter 1 to well to learn the truth. Being taught from the pulpit, the right and exemplifying word to honor his word above his name. Such a great work is ours. And we are being called to jubilate ourselves and to teach the word of God every day so that they should increase and not decrease. 
But when the right word of God has been taught, people call the way to be decreased because they don't come to follow every day. But remember the way how we can read in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Lord our God was probing them to humble themselves so that they could come and collect the word of God every day. Their feet were not been swelled up, collapsed. Their garments were not worn out. Yet the word of God was been given for them to probe, to put to test whether they will certainly occupy to become a man in God in the midst of this evil world. Though not of this world, but residing in the world to be a witness for his truth. We are in the enemy territory. The prince of the power of this air constantly seeks you not to understand the word, to divert your mind from the true issue of life, which is nothing but the word of God. Though we are in our enemy territory, we cannot no longer be accustomed to the world. Christ our Lord prayed for us. Keep them away from this world, not to take away, but to sanctify them and keep for us, says John 17. And how many of them are being sanctified by the word of God and for his work? We shall all find them at the judgment seat of Christ. How many of them have really feared the word of God and from the parent stage they have trained their children for the godly seed rather than giving them as a living sacrifice of human realm on this earth for Satan but rather making them to be the righteous living sacrifice for the word of God which is good, which is perfect, which is acceptable by the renovation of their thinking. Even they are answerable to the Lord. How many they have been made? One godly seed is enough. Rather than making to have hundreds and two hundreds or three hundred people of children. Where Solomon tells, I made children so that I can find happiness. But he found what? Nothing. Vanity of vanity. One godly seed where Paul tells to Timothy as an example, like Apophis, Apopodiphus, Tychicus, Titus. One godly seed is enough to carry the torch to the next generation. And rather than making that godly seed to be a sacrifice to this earth, for human pleasure, for their food. Go back and read Ezekiel 23, 37, you will find the pain of our Lord. That godly seed which was for me has become for their food by their sacrifice. And by that we mean human sacrifice. Today the human have been sacrificed for their things pertaining to each and every cultish thoughts of demonic realm. But not a living sacrifice to the word of God. How many days more you want to search in a frantic happiness of this world and not be satisfied? Being a believer, wake up to the truth. Being an unbeliever, wake up to Christ our Lord. Because he is the way, the truth and the life. And after you believe in my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, John 4, 24, worship him in the filling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the lesser include miracles, healings, or tongues. The controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control every thought and get into captivity for Christ. When you grow up to realize by absorbing the truth, so that now we can be eligible to take in charge by daily trained up. The maximum time, three years, by Apostle Paul. Ephesians, Ephesians, where we, in the place of Ephesians, when we read in Acts chapter 20. Maximum time, three years. But the time you should grow up. Though you live a short span of time on this earth, do not worry, you witness for the truth, that's enough. That's the ultimate goal. What do you will enjoy with the pleasures of this earth? The pleasures of this earth are nothing. The natures of this earth are nothing before the wisdom and the mind of Christ. We find our treasures and pleasures and everything in Christ. In Christ alone we have everything. And honoring Him not to let go enough in the midst of this unbelieving, blasphemous talks, to degrade my Lord, but to honor Him above anything else. Remember the knowledge which has been told for us, though it was a red sea before them, the army of horses and chariots which came along, but everything, when Christ our Lord opened the way, it has become floating in their eyes. Such is the attitude of Satan with its thoughts, with its warring always about, upon you. But you have Christ in you, abiding in Him, and He abides in you. So that whatsoever you ask according to will, the God, the will of God the Father, it shall be provided for you. If you lack wisdom, you ask unto the Lord. If you ask before asking wisdom, you should ask our Lord the fear of the Lord and His word. 
not just teaching, not just preaching, but not able to understand the practical life of it and the importance of it and the power of it. Today's, today, many men want to have their life only to be in the boasting knowledge and not what they practically do, they want to teach, not what they practically enjoy in the Word of God and to really look upon, to be strong, to be courageous and not to fear this earth. Yet they have in their mind, they are all alibis and excuses to tell, how can I preach, how can I be? They worry about their softies. Does not the word of God tells, if you don't confess my words before the men, I will not confess you before the Father in heaven. And that doesn't refer only to the gospel of salvation. It refers to every word which has been given for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to accurately and rightly divide the word of truth. It has been given for us and it's our privilege. After you die, you cannot do that. Before the rapture of the church only you can do. If it is a rapture of the church, you cannot do that. Our life should be holy walking Bibles to this world. If we cut our hands, blood should not flow. The word of God should flow from us. And that should constantly lead you to tell the cosmos thinking is 0, 0, 0, 0. It cannot hold us back. The world is not enough for us to witness for the truth. And we are being called even to witness to the angels. Such is a great privilege for us in this church age. And how many days more yet you want to live a life that is not according to the mind of Christ? You do it. We are not worried about that. Even the pastor teachers, let them do it. We are not worried about that. Neither we are answerable to you, neither you are answerable to me. We all will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. That day you will realize whether this grace was been proclaimed for you. And whichever man our Lord could feel best to understand the Dikaya Sunya process of kneeling down. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Much is given for us and much is expected from us and we cannot waste our life in the silly attitudes of this world. We are not being led over here for sissies and softies. We are led over here to be a man in the world, a world which is of devil, but a man of the word of God in the midst of this devil, like a voice in the wilderness being adapted to this earth to preach the gospel, to teach and to mentor the word of God to this people, to change their thinking. And you'll have a tough time, but in every tough time, Lord our God is going to give you victory, because already the word of God alone shall abide forever and forever, though the earth and the heaven perish off. You'll have a tough time, but that tough time is nothing compared to the word of God. Because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And it is the word of our Lord, our God, that shall reign forever and forever. He is the only righteous king who shall reign forever and forever. And we are his servants on this earth. We are not only just servants, we are prisoners for, his, for him on this earth. And for his word on this earth. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue with the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God, the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Savior, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care so thon lagan, herald all the word in season out of season, because of the diamond my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in dwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord, no matter however the chips may fall, however the people may think that they are worried about their softies, but we don't care about the softies, neither we are worried about the reasons of this rationalism and empiricism of this world being put together. We are worried only about one thing, we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith in the word of God, faith in the power of God, faith in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that when we are abiding in Christ our Lord and when, like, when Christ our Lord abides in us through his Father, then we have everything for us to be joy. So which way you go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue.
Father, we are very grateful and much thankful for this great and unique privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlighten with these things and make it as also a blessing and challenge for thy glory, O Lord. Nothing on this earth is more important than to honor thy word about your name, which you have done for us and which you have made for us through your son to understand to be a witnesses for thy truth. So, Father, we commit everything into thy hands so that even we could be as thy sperma holded men on this earth in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we are also here to witness thy truth from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, not turning back and until we have finished our enemy to get every thought into captivity for Christ and to be telling that we have done our work like an uncomfortable slaves, being chosen though as sons of God on this earth for thy glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten up all these things. In Christ's name we ask. Amen.